Serjit Bassi on email says, just wanted to say, I was in the same year as president at President Kennedy School, Coventry with Raj. Um, I don't know whether you remember him. Do you remember Serjit Bassi? Yeah. You yeah, do? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, when I hit, yeah, I mean, yeah, someone, someone should do a reunion. Are you a sure? Reunion. <laughs> someone should do a reunion. <laughs> Before they knock the school down, because apparently they're going to knock it down, but, you know. Are they really? Yeah. Are you in touch with anybody from your school? Just my friends. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. So, <laughs> I can still remember the teachers and stuff. Yeah, who was your favourite teacher? Mrs. Farrell, her name was. Do you have a crush on her? No, she was like, actually quite old, but you know, she used to help me out and stuff, you know? That's good. Were you quite studious? Um, yeah. Don't take this the wrong way, but I bet you skived a little bit. Yeah, I guess I did, yeah. <laughs> did you? I love how you just didn't lie there. I did. Yeah. Did you skive a lot? No, well, <clears throat> I had a. I had you a, must tell the truth in this phase. studio. Things start happening to you if you don't. Yeah, and I had a little period when I did. Really? Yeah, had a little trouble, trouble with some um, lads, local lads and stuff. Oh. Because, uh, I mean, there's a lot of skinheads and stuff like that in Coventry when I was growing up, you know? And um, so I had a bit of trouble. So I never used to, like, like, I used to go in school back way when I could. <laughs> but when they were on the back, I used to just go back home, you know? Oh. So that was a little period I had. But no, I, I mean, yeah. I, I, was, I used to enjoy school, so it was nothing to sky it for, really. Was there, any pre- was, was there any pressure from your family to study on and. Yeah, there was. There was. Um, because uh, you know it's uh, you know I went uni and stuff so which uni did you I go went to? to Montford, to Montford uni. What did you study there? Computer science. Did you go to any of your lectures? <laughs> well, no, I did all right in there. So um, I went to the minimal amount of lectures I was could get to. And, uh, <laughs> did you? Yeah, and then from there, you know, that I could get to to pass. You know, I, but at the same you? time, I did my music, my DJ, and stuff. Why did you do a computer science degree? To be honest, you know what, it's because a lot of Because I music can't see you being happy sitting in an office, nine to five. No, that's true, but uh, computers are obviously used in studios. That's true. As well, so I mean, I got a lot of knowledge from, you know, from, from my studying and uh, used that in the studio a lot. Yeah. Mm. But I can't imagine, like, I bet that... Was that the worst thing you, if for you in your head to have a nine to five kind of office job? I don't know. I, Did you I, ever do that? I, I mean, I've had jobs and stuff, yeah. you know, but... Uh, you know, I guess, uh, I mean, I don't know, I th- you know, it's, it's not such a bad thought to me, you know, to have a nine to five job. Really? Yeah. Don't. You were going to ruin my image of you. You're oh, like okay. Mr. Cool, like, you know, chilled out, laid back. Yeah. You know, you, you do the music thing, you don't do the office nine to five. Okay. You're well, Mr. Creative. Yeah, I mean, I guess so, I guess so. But I st- to be honest, I, I, I'm more of a in the, in, in the studio kind of guy anyway. You yeah. Know? That's my office, so, you know, that's where I work. Exactly. And it's not like I even leave, you know, from nine to five. No, you go, work harder go, than somebody in an office. Yeah, but your eight. your computers are yeah, exactly. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> Straight after this message we're gonna get to one of the biggest hits of your career for non Asians too. Sonia Dior, weekday mornings from 10 on BBC Asian Network. So, in conversation with our special guests on the show, Punjabi MC, and uh, one of the biggest tracks. Now, we all heard it, we loved it, it was played at weddings, parties everywhere. Then it kind of, for us, it was, it was a song that, you know, we've had, we bought in our collections, and then all of a sudden... It becomes number one in the top 40 years later. Mundi Adobachke is the track that I'm talking about. Explain. Yeah, um, it, I mean, it did, it got, it got released, it became a big hit in the Bangla market. And then, um, you know, R&B DJ started playing it, you know, big R&B DJ started playing so how it. Did, how did it happen? So, like, four years later, it ends up being number one on, on top of the pops. Was it some club in Europe that... Quite a few like people had picked up on it, yeah. You know, w- w- what it is, I mean, when I first released it, I went on to see Tim Westwood, went on the Tim Westwood show, like, he heard the track and phoned me up and said, come on my show. So, uh, you know, it, it's like, it, obviously, it got picked up by Westwood, he helped um, promote it to the American artist, and then it got put on an AV8 thing, which was like a DJ Breaks record thing. Uh-huh. And that's so eventually, you know, DJ started, hip-hop DJ started playing it. But it is amazing, isn't it? Raj, when you think about it, here's a track that, like, it took four years f- for 
mainstream audiences to pick it up and then it went straight to number one so all these arguments about oh will an asian artist ever make it number one and will the li the lyrics of oh, it, it won't happen because people don't understand the lyrics or you know this music doesn't it, it it doesn't sound like pop music it will never happen all that stuff got thrown out the window with this didn't it definitely definitely i mean yeah i mean like you're saying to me it went into the network charts in uk reached number five um, uh, like, uh, well, we could you could say like in generally speaking in the world it was a number one song you know at that time, and uh, you're right. I mean any um, like language barriers or anything were kind of pretty pretty much thrown out the window. So what what do you think? Why doesn't hasn't it happened more? What's stopping? It? Is it airplay? Because that my feeling is that it's airplay on radio stations across the board. What what is it for you? Well, I mean, what what happened with the Munda the Batch gear actually with Jay Z coming on there and everything? I mean, I don't think that can actually be able, would be able to happen again because obviously we know now that uh, you know the world listens to to Bangladeshi music. You know, they know they've heard the word Punjabi and yeah. But at the time, you know, we thought like when Munda the Batch gear first came out, we I was the least person I thought would be my fan would be Jay Z or Spike Lee and people like that phoning me up. You know. So and is that is that what happened? Jay Z just phoned you. Yeah, Jay Z's heard heard it, you know, um, <clears throat> and just basically yeah, got in touch with us. Uh, on the other hand, like Spike Lee for the Inside Man, he just phoned me directly and just said, "Look, you know, yes, you know, right, you Spike Lee, you know, I'm a big fan." So I mean, obviously, we, when Jay Z raps on that Pongara song, you know, everyone who was into Pongara, everyone who's Punjabi feeling that music was gonna obviously, you know, it, it, was, it was something that can't really happen again on that level i think do you remember being on top of the pops yes uh, i can remember being on top of the pops <laughs> what was it like the experience and who was on stage with you i had yeah chaos bomber i had sonal galian and uh, unfortunately we couldn't get love junjo due to visa uh which um you know for and, sh and shamingly we couldn't get love junjo on there but so we got iqbal to basically uh take Junjo's place and yeah sorry <laughs> <laughs> isn't that great but there'd be so many people who'd be none the wiser well i mean the, the thing is we had to do it because obviously we had you know the Junjo was booked on the top of the parks and in germany and all around like europe and all these shows you know they, they, everyone was ready to go and uh you know in the last minute you know for um reasons that i personally don't want to go into right now let's not get too political but you know he couldn't get the visa from india and uh so basically uh we had to put someone there to fill that role you know and what was it like for you did you enjoy the experience were you nervous well I, doing the actual shows isn't too bad because obviously you're just miming the you know top of the pops you kind of like I, I was behind the turntables you know and uh, i enjoyed watching uh the show, you know, as it were. Yeah. From back there. <laughs> Who else was on it that that week? Do you remember? Um, I can't. No. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm going to play the track. Okay. This is Mundiato Bachke, which was number one in this country. This is Punjabi MC, our special guest on the BBC Asian Network. Right, while this was playing, I'm just trying to convince uh, Punjabi MC if we can get his mum on the show. And, uh, you know, like, come on, it's a good idea. You've never had your mum on, on, on an interview at the same time, have you? No. It'd be nice. Yeah, well, I don't I mind. want to say I'm going to try and dig the number out, you know. Please. Yeah. I, want, I want to say yeah, Sashugar yeah. to Auntie G. And okay. I just I just want to congratulate like her. I, said, I mean, she, I think she might be travelling right now, so, I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah. I f yeah. number Okay. Okay, come um, Okay, so just uh, got his phone out there. Yeah, um, okay, Obviously, so don't give out the number on air, obviously. No, we'll of course, just get Samina's going to run in and uh, get, get but, the. Um, just while I'm doing that, peeps, um, yeah, I've got my uh, Twitter site. Uh, yeah, yeah, plug all that. Come on. Yeah. Punjabi MC1. Okay. I've got my website, pmcrecords.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, check me on Facebook. You know, but pmcrecords.com is my main website. It's where you get all the information. Quite a nice website, actually. Yeah. It's very, very well put together. I was looking at that myself. Who looks after that then? Um, yeah. <laughs> You're multitasking now. I can't find what? it. You? What? Your mum's number? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I right! Just, I just got the phone. That's what it is. You haven't got your mum's number in your phone? Obviously she hasn't rang me, has she? That's a disaster. Do you know your mum's number off by heart? That's what I'm saying, you know, you always see her, so I never ring her. That's the Does problem. anyone know Raj's number? R n number? Raj's mum's number? 08459 <laughs> 440 445. 
if you know PMC and uh, would like to speak to you. 08459 440 This could go horribly wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure she's travelling anyway. Where is Otherwise she travelling to? Otherwise she would have rang up and, uh, you know, got a little prop and uh, advertised the shop, you Wh- know. Where is she travelling? <laughs> where is she travelling to? She, I, um, I think she's got to get doctors. She's talking about an appointment. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Our mums are always going to the doctor. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, you know. It's, a, it's that time of day again, isn't, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> Amajit is on the line from Coventry. Hello, Amajit. Hello. Hi, Amajit. Hello, Sasrigal, buddy. Sasrigal. Sasrigal, Sonia, and you don't know. Sasrigal, gee. Sasrigal. मुंडिया <laughs> 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 ਬਹੁਤ ਸੋਹਣਾ ਲੱਗਾ ਸੀ ਗਾਣਾ ਨਾ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਲਾਭ ਜੰਜੂਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਕੋਈ ਜਾਣਦਾ ਵੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਨਾ ਹੂੰ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਕਰਕੇ ਤੋਂ ਕੰਗਰੈਚੁਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਹੀ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਕਹਿਣਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਆ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਉਹਦਾ ਨਾਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੋਰ ਵੀ ਗਾਣੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਸੋਹਣੇ ਬਣਾਏ ਤੇ ਇਹ ਕਿਤੇ ਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਕਿ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੁਆਂਟਰੀ ਚ ਰਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਕੁਆਂਟਰੀ ਚ ਰਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਕੋਲੇ ਰਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਠੀਕ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਵੈਰੀ ਗੁੱਡ ਓ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮੱਚ ਭਾਈ ਓਕੇ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਓਕੇ ਜੀ ਬਾਏ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਜੀ ਓਕੇ Went very quickly. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, I think someone's <laughs> going to go around my shop now. Yeah, you never know. Was it? D- just let mention the shop where it is again, please. Folsel Road. Fo- Folsel Road. Folsel Road. In Coventry. Yep. What number? Nine twenty. Nine twenty. Falls Hill Road in Coventry <laughs> is Punjabi MC's mum's HQ. HQ. Yeah, my HQ. And your mum's HQ. I guess so. Well, she's like the boss at your HQ. Yeah. She's your boss. Yep. And I'm now going to play a track from your new album called Murni, which we've been championing here and playing. And uh, the new album is called The Raj. Nice, that. Mm, mm. And what would you say about the new album in terms of where you're at musically now? Still enjoying the whole process and the journey? And Yeah, it's still learning. Um, you're so chilled out, honestly. You're going to fall off the chair, you're that chilled out. Okay. Come on, then. Yeah, still learning and, you know, just, uh, yeah, enjoying uh, the journey, as it were, definitely. Yeah. But um, with the Raj, I've gone a little bit more, like, uh, technically kind of, like, laid off a little bit, you know, and just done it by feel and by, by you know, hit by ear, you could say. And um, did, uh, like, what did, did were there, were there, did, was there political intervention from the government here? Because on the cover it's, like, recorded in Great Britain. <laughs> and there's the crown in the front. Yeah. What's the going Koyanur, on there, the, then? That's the Koyanur's uh, image. But, uh... No, I mean, the thing is, like, yeah, obviously the British Raj, uh, you know, it was the British Raj, and then India was a colony, and so that's why we kind of ended up in England. Um, we came to work, our parents came to work, whatever. So, you know, that's where where Bang- Bangalore was born, you know, is in it, the UK. Are you trying to sell the Queen? You want the diamond back? Is that... Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, I don't know, I don't know. You know, you can look into it in the way. And also, my name's Raj as well, Rajinda. That's true. So. so it's like the Raj. Yeah. Where did the name Punjabi MC come from? I didn't ask you that earlier. <laughs> well, I just, you know, when I first started rapping, that's why I got into the game rapping. Um, I used to MC a lot, and people started calling me the Indian MC, you know, and I did have some other names, um, and I was... You know, I can't remember their names, but no, no one could ever remember those names. So they say, oh, there's an Indian MC or Indian rapper. And uh, that's where I mean, got it from. Because I remember saying to them, you know, call me uh, Punjabi MC because, uh, you know, Indian is not a language, you know. So, and, and it's like, oh, you, you know, you're speaking Indian. And I'm like, yeah, I'm speaking in Punjabi, you know. But I just said it to a couple of lads once. And all of a sudden, I just like remembered it. Like, yo, Punjabi MC, you know, there's Punjabi ah, MC. Ah, so, so they nicknamed you and then it kind of stayed. Yeah, I mean, just got, that's what, yeah. Just, Can I ask you a question before I play more, Andy? Mm. You know how, like, you used to rap? Yeah. Right. Sometimes rapping has naughty words in it. But mm. are you able to rap with with not any naughty words in it? Can you still rap? Yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah. Can you do I something mean, for me now? the Raj song uh, on the album is actually a rap song. Is an actual rap song. You do something for me now and and uh, freestyle a bit, and, yeah. but don't put any naughty words in it. Okay, um, started with the cannibal caveman scripts painted on rocks where the great Indus River splits aboriginals that now only exist in the south taken over by the Aryan fist BC the first to bake bricks build streets with drains make metal and rice grain from the hills of the Himalayas the Indus Valley region grew its own first name Sab Sindhu the land of the seven rivers during verdict era pioneered the army and soldier 